Welcome to Watch Therefore, the program designed to help the disciple of Messiah Jesus obey his command to watch therefore and be ready for you don't know the hour or the day the Son of Man is coming, coming to take us back to that place he's prepared for us. Dove Schwartz here at the Sea of Galilee, encouraging everyone who's watching today more than ever to watch therefore and be ready. Jerusalem's Zion's king will restore the land, the clouds will part, and our king will descend the fire in his eyes, seven stars, his right hand. I'm so Blessed and thankful to be with you once again today. And I have a question to start off our time together. Are you a bondservant of Messiah Jesus? A bondservant back in Bible times was a lifelong willing servant. For example, if someone owed a debt they couldn't pay, they would serve for an agreed period of time to work off the debt. Then they would be released. But a bondservant would recognize that their master was such a good master. Uh, in, in many cases, a notable person and prominent man in the community who was very honorable and noble. And the person who was the bondservant would say, I want to serve this master the rest of my life. It would be better to be this person's bondservant than to go out into the world on my own. And we have the greatest master, the kindest, most powerful, best and, and most noble master ever, our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we begin our study in the book of Philippians written by the Holy Spirit through his apostle Paul, let's prepare our hearts to be bondservants of the Most High God. Let's pray. Oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, uh, myself, I can say, uh, I don't want to go out into this world to serve myself and live for myself. I want to be your lifelong servant, Lord Jesus. I'm your bondservant, and I pray that's the heart of many who are watching today. Teach us through your word how to be uh, the bondservants you've uh, called us to be that will give you glory honor and praise. Help us to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We ask it in our Messiah Jesus' name. Amen. And you know, um, often on this program, I talk about and teach about the faithful servant. Uh, one of my goals is to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant, when I stand before the Lord, and to make disciples who hear the same. Messiah Yeshua, our Lord Jesus, was Abba's faithful servant. And now he sits next to him on his throne in heaven. He's the reigning king, Messiah Jesus. And so we're to be his faithful servants now. And, and, and Paul began his ministry in Philippi from the Macedonian call that he received in the books of Acts. And he began with great suffering, casting out demons, signs and wonders, and gospel preaching, then saved souls and new disciples in Messiah Jesus. We see this in the book of Acts in great detail. Uh, and these are foundational events that took place to set up the Philippian congregation. Now, Satan fought very aggressively against this church's foundations and founding. Uh, the Lord broke through then with signs and wonders. Someone say, hallelujah. And, and believers in Philippi, they first uh, saw the suffering of Paul, him having the fellowship of the sufferings of Messiah Jesus, and then the powerful resurrection power of Messiah Jesus working through Paul. And, and this is so important for them to see why. Philippi was a Roman colony. And for everyone in the world who's ever lived, but especially the Roman Greco 
uh, person, the person who, who grew up in or was established in a Roman Greco culture that was power-minded, uh, go forward, do whatever it takes to win. You know, the, the Olympic, the Olympian way of thinking, right? Power, strength, this, the suffering Savior who died on the cross, that that's how he would get victory for God and for the people of God. That, that would be very foreign to anyone, but especially the Roman mind. But these, at the beginnings of the foundation of the church in Philippi, they saw God's order and that it certainly works. Um, This very Jewish apostle is teaching a non-Jewish community. They're a gospel community about the Elohim of Israel. The Philippian church, they participated in Paul's ministry in every way, praying giving and going, supporting his gospel ministry. And and it's so important to have a faithful servant body of believers in Messiah Jesus, a faithful gospel sending church. And, and, And Messiah Yeshua, he's our pattern for faithful servant lives. Well, that's just a little setup to begin teaching in the book of Philippians. Let's look at uh, chapter one, verses one and two first, shall we? Paul and Timothy, bondservants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. See how Paul starts off the letter that he and Timothy are what? Bondservants. They're bondservants of Messiah Jesus. So I ask the question again, are you a bondservant of Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ? Paul is writing to the Philippian body of Messiah there in Philippi. Uh, He's writing to them from jail. He's writing to them from jail. And and, and look at Timothy, who's there with him, uh, somewhere there in the local community and, and staying in touch with Paul, helping Paul while he's incarcerated. Now, he's standing by Paul even by this in this time of trouble. And, you know, that could be risky because uh, to to stand with Paul to be close to Paul meant you could wind up close to Paul, incarcerated as well. No, but Timothy took the risk. Timothy took the risk to stand by God's man. Uh, he says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, too often we read by this kind of introduction to a letter. But let me tell you something. We need to think about grace and peace. Grace, God's goodness that none of us deserve that we get through Messiah Jesus. And also, grace that teaches and works. Grace that saves, grace that teaches, grace that works and changes us into the image of Messiah Jesus. Hallelujah and hallelujah. And and we have peace with God. What do you mean? The whole world, we're born at war with God, separated from Him by our sins. We're... We're not sinners because we sin. We sin because we're sinners. That's our nature. And we, we come out of the womb at war with God. But when we're saved by Messiah Jesus, when we repent and believe in his gospel, then we have peace with God our Father through Messiah Jesus. And, and then let's move on to verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. You see, Paul is constantly praying and concerned for this body of believers assigned to him, and especially the individual disciples of Messiah Jesus to whom he's assigned. What can we get from this? We should have precious souls in church and precious souls who are lost who need to be saved for whom we regularly pray. See, when you invest in something, you tend to care more for it. Prayer is an investment of your heart and of your time, and the Spirit of God will work through it to bring fruit from His kingdom to this earth into the lives of precious souls. He says, Paul says, making requests for you all. He doesn't want anyone to to be left behind. Remember, Messiah Jesus said, 
uh, that the shepherd leaves the 99 to go for the one. Paul wants everyone to experience the grace and peace uh, that, that can be found in Messiah Jesus. And, and you see here they have this common unity in the gospel. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Our fellowship in the gospel is so very important. Why? True fellowship is gospel fellowship. That this church participated in Paul's ministry demonstrates that this is a gospel congregation. There's a lot of church fellowship today. It's not true gospel fellowship. But, but think of this. Without the gospel, what do we have? What do we have? L- look at Proverbs 11.30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. We're to be gospel people. We're to be gospel people. What is the gospel? That Messiah Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He was buried, and on the third day, he rose from the grave. And Messiah Jesus said in Mark chapter 1 that we must repent of our sins and believe in the gospel. We must repent of our sins and believe in the gospel. This is the way to be saved. This is the way to then come into the community of the believers of Messiah Jesus. We'll be right back in just a moment. I'm so thankful for how the Lord is blessing our Watch Therefore television program and our ministries, blessing Israeli believers and poured out for the nations. You see, the Watch Therefore message presents the urgency to the lost, receive Messiah Jesus as Lord and Savior, now. It stirs the lukewarm out of lukewarmness and also helps make faithful servant disciples of Messiah Jesus. With our ministry blessing Israeli believers and ministry partner John McTurnan and myself who co-founded it, we're partnering with Israeli believers in Messiah Yeshua who are getting out the gospel, making disciples, saving babies from abortion, and much more. And then our To the Nations ministry poured out for the nations. I've been ministering in 10 African countries for over 10 years in America and going into India. Oh, listen, there's so much that we're doing. You can sign up for our monthly newsletter, which I'll share about with you in just a moment. For anyone who's watching that would like deeper faith, stronger faith, and authentic encounters and experiences with the Holy Spirit of the living God to help you abide in Messiah Jesus, know our Father in heaven in even deeper ways, we have something very special we're presenting. It's the Watch Therefore Israel tour in October and then early November. It's about a 10-day tour in 2019. It's going to be so special. What we're doing is putting information up on the screen now so you can find out more. Don't miss our Watch Therefore Israel tour. It is going to be so exciting, so amazing. You don't want to miss it. And it will help you watch Therefore and be ready. I am thankful that the Watch Therefore television program is expanding. And with that expansion also comes an expansion of airtime expenses and production costs. But our help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And we trust him to raise faithful partners from our viewing audience who want to come alongside with us and lay up their treasures in heaven. Now, first may I say, if you haven't received Jesus as your savior and Lord, please don't send any any money into this program. It's our desire that you would receive him as Lord even today and enjoy the program, be our guests. But for those who have been born again and want to lay up their treasures in heaven, we say, come on, let's bear fruit that will remain forever together which, with the Watch Therefore message. Now, for those of you who are already partnering, I wanna say a big thank you. I thank the Lord for you. We pray for you and trust that he's blessing you. Sign up for our monthly newsletters with the information that's there on the screen and we'll send you our Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nation's monthly updates so you can pray and help us in our work. Unless we really trust the words of our Messiah Jesus, it's almost impossible to imagine the kind of generation we live in. With the birth pangs, the fig tree putting forth leaves, and the days of Noah all taking place at the same time. Like I said, it's just hard to imagine how difficult it's going to get in this generation. You may think, well, it's already difficult. Well, it's going to get worse fast. But the same kind of grace that was available to Noah is available to us today. And what I do with my book, Watch Therefore and Be Ready, is I teach on how you can be the faithful servant of Messiah Jesus and be very successful 
regarding eternal kingdom success in this generation. Many are gonna be caught off guard, but it doesn't have to be you. So for a donation of any amount, we'll send you our book, Watch Therefore and Be Ready, to help you watch therefore and be ready. Welcome back to Watch Therefore. Before the break, we saw that the congregation of believers in Messiah Jesus in Philippi was 100% behind the Apostle Paul in his gospel ministry. This was a gospel congregation. And we saw in Proverbs 11, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. This relationship between the church in Philippi and the gospel ministry of Paul is so very important. Uh, and uh, there are many who partner with us. And, and I'm going to give an example of a church in Texas, Calvary Chapel, Beth Shalom in Pearland, uh, that I helped plant. And the pastor there and, and, and his wife and many others uh, that were there at the beginning and founding of this congregation, from the beginning, we had a vision that is a gospel and discipleship vision. What we're looking for, we're praying for, are real Jesus people, people who will really love the Lord with all of their heart and love their neighbors or self. That's the foundation of their lives, and we're building on that. And, and so uh, they participate from Texas with our ministry here, and I participate from here with going there and teaching and preaching. Uh, and so they help me here in Israel and in the nations. And of course, there are many faithful partners, more now than ever. And we're, we're trusting the Lord that, uh, that this would continue through the ministry of Watch Therefore. And I'm also interested in building relationships with churches and going and speaking and having a greater and deeper relationships in the gospel with communities in Messiah Jesus all over the place. And, and if you're watching and you want to find out more about that, feel free to contact us using the contact information on your screen. Now, as we go into Philippians uh, chapter 1, verse 6 and onward, look at this. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers with me of grace. Again, he says, I think this of you all. He's praying for all the believers in the body of Christ in Philippi. And Paul is confident that the Lord who began this good work in the individuals and then corporately in the body of Messiah there would accomplish his work in these individuals and in the body that he began through Paul's ministry. It's a work of grace. Grace always meets you where you are, but grace never leaves you there. Hallelujah. His grace is operating, changing us into the image of Messiah Jesus. And Paul is, Paul is intentionally a gospel and discipleship man. He knows that his gospel and discipleship ministry is empowered by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, and will bear fruit that will remain. How do we know that? Well, how did Paul know that? <laughs> let's, let, let's ask that question. How did Paul know that? Look back at the book of Acts chapter 26 as he's giving a testimony of what, what, what happened when he was on his way to persecute believers in Messiah, in Messiah Jesus before he had become a believer. And uh, let's pick up in Acts 26 verse 13. At midday, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and the things which I will yet reveal to you. Now look at this. This is so powerful. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Excuse me a moment. Hallelujah. You see, Paul, who was a persecutor of Messiah Jesus and his followers, 
became a great witness of the glory of Messiah Jesus. And he sent not only to share the gospel, but the gospel is the power of God to initiate these other things, but that people would receive the inheritance that our Father through Messiah Jesus by the Holy Spirit wants to give them. And see, folks, that's why I have this program called Watch Therefore. That's why I'm talking about you be hearing, well done, thy good and faithful servant. There's an inheritance that you have that's waiting for you. But you have to walk by faith. This faith Paul received and then spread uh, to Philippi and other places. And they worked together to, 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 with the gospel ministry to see that others would get their inheritance. And that is foreign to so many who say they follow Jesus the Lord today. And there certainly has been times in my walk where it's been foreign. But I'm locked and loaded like a laser now on making faithful servant disciples of Messiah Jesus. Are you a bond servant of Messiah Jesus? Look at the Gospel of John chapter 15 to see this powerful calling that Paul had, but that we all have to one degree or another. Messiah Jesus says, you, do not, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you these things. I command you that you love one another. Wow, look at this, that you love one another. It's, it's a gospel of love. It's a gospel of selflessness. It's a gospel of servanthood. Hallelujah. Messiah Yeshua and his servant Paul, they're patterns for me. And according to this word of the Lord and my calling to make faithful servant disciples, I tell you, anyone who's watching right now and you're receiving this truth from God's word, I'm confident for the very same thing for you, that he who began a good work in you will complete it till the day of Messiah Jesus where you stand before the Lord after, after having been raptured and you're at the judgment seat of Messiah Jesus that you will receive your inheritance. So with as much as I can have a part in it, I pray and labor in the word that you will hear. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Let's look at Philippians 1, 7 again, just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. And as much as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all, you all are partakers with me of grace. See, it's about all of the believers in the body. He wants them all. He has a burden from all to follow Messiah Jesus. Does everybody follow Messiah Jesus? Does everybody receive their inheritance? No, but that's not going to be Paul's fault. Amen? Because that's what his desire is. And that's what the Lord wants as well. And he speaks of those in chains and, and uh, his defense and confirmation of the gospel. And we'll see more details of this as we continue on through the book of Philippians. But remember, Peter instructed that while being persecuted, uh, that we should have this defense that believers in Messiah Jesus, while they're being persecuted, should have a defense for the faith that is in them. For example, why do you endure such persecution and suffering? Why? It's because I'm looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of my great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, that I might hear well done, the good and faithful servant. There's no other hope. What is your hope? What are you hoping in? If it's not Messiah Jesus, it's a, it's a false hope. But if it's in Messiah Jesus, it's a hope that cannot disappoint. Hallelujah. And, and he says, you're partakers with me of grace. You see, again, we're to be connected. Those who stay and those who go out with the gospel and those who are persecuted for the gospel we are to stay connected. Look at Hebrews chapter 13. We need to remember this, folks. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated since you yourselves are in the body also. Here's a name some of you may remember. Pastor Brunson, who recently, after serving two years for righteousness, for serving Messiah Jesus, was imprisoned in Turkey. And he was recently released. We were praying for him. We were so thankful to turn on the television and see him praying there for President Trump after being released from jail. Oh, hallelujah. We remembered Pastor Brunson and there are many who are persecuted in North Korea and Persia, all over the world, and we regularly pray for them. Do you remember those who are persecuted? Are, are, do you have a defense for the gospel that is within you? Well, the Philippians and Paul, they're par participating together in the work of grace. 
faith that saves, faith that teaches, faith that works. Here's a question. Have you been saved by that grace? Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You know, I go to church. Oh, I have a Bible. Those are all important. I give money. And, and we all need money in ministry. Hey, the gospel is free, but spreading it costs money. Yeah? But none of that will save you because we're only saved by grace through faith. God's goodness that sent his only begotten son to live a sinless life on this earth and that when his innocent blood spilled down that cross, he was paying for every time you and I have lied, cursed God's name, lusted, and much more. What do I have to do to be saved? It's a great question. The Philippian jailer asked that, and the answer is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. Put your faith in him. He died on the cross for your sins, and hallelujah, rose from the grave, and that you need to become his disciple. Commit to him to do that today. Ask him to save you and forgive you today, and he will by his grace and mercy. Oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, please save me. Please heal me. Please bless me. Please give me a life that honors God. I, I want to be, be in Christ. I want to be in Messiah, not in Adam and his sin. Please save me, Lord. I'm putting my faith in you today. In Jesus' name, I ask it. Amen. If you're doing that today, he's saving you today. Now, there's some information on your screen. We'll send you some free literature if you'll request it that will help you begin your new life in Messiah Jesus for everyone who's watching today. We pray great and abundant blessings. Thank you so much for those who are partnering with our ministry. It's a gospel ministry. It's a discipleship ministry here in Israel and the nations. We can do this together like they did in the scriptures. Hallelujah. Until we get together next time, remember to watch, therefore, Messiah Jesus is coming any moment. Thank you for watching the program today. Watch Therefore is sponsored by the friends and partners of Watch Therefore Ministries. In future programs, we'll have many more Watch Therefore teachings from the Bible, worship, and exciting interviews with our believing partners in Israel and around the world. Please contact us at doveforisrael at gmail.com. That's D-O-V-F-O-R. I-S-R-A-E-L at gmail.com. And if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, you can fill out a contact form on the website watchtherefore.tv. We also have audio programs available on our website watchtherefore.tv. We are on social media since it is a great tool to share the gospel and communicate with one another. You can also find us there at watchtherefore.tv. Until next time, we're watching for King Jesus to return. Watch, therefore, and be ready. We know he came. The Lamb who was slain, he'll come again. Our conquering King on that day. His sword will go forth to take back and restore what belongs. What be-